episode 13. I wish I hadn't started, he thought unhappily as a pale blue black bird flew by. There doesn't seem to be any way to stop them. He tried very hard to do everything just the way Chroma had done, but nothing worked. The musicians played on faster and faster, and the purple sun raced quickly across the sky. In less than a minute, it had set once more in the west, and then, without any pause, risen again in the east. The sky was now quite yellow, and the grass a charming shade of lavender. Seven times the sun rose. It almost as quickly disappeared as the colors kept changing. In just a few minutes, a whole week had flown by. At last, the exhausted Milo, afraid to call for help and on the verge of tears, dropped his hands to his sides. The orchestra stopped. The colors disappeared, and once again, it was night. The time was 5.27 a.m. Wake up, everybody! Time for the sunrise! He shouted with relief and quickly jumped from the music stand. What a marvelous rest, said Chroma, striding to the podium. I feel as though I'd slept for a week. My, my, I see we're a little late this morning. I'll have to cut my lunch hour short by four minutes. He tapped for attention, and this time the dawn proceeded perfectly. You did a fine job, he said, patting Milo on the head. Someday I'll let you conduct the orchestra yourself. Tuck wagged his tail proudly, but Milo didn't say a word. And to this day, no one knows of the lost week, but a few people who happened to be awake at 523 on that very strange morning. We'd better be getting along, said Tuck, whose alarm had begun to ring again for there's still a long way to go. Chroma nodded a fond goodbye as they all started back through the forest, and in honor of the visit, he made all the wildflowers bloom in a breathtaking display. I'm sorry you couldn't stay longer, said Alec sadly. There's so much more to see in the forest of sight, but I suppose there's a lot to see everywhere if only you keep your eyes open. They walked for a while all silent in their thoughts until they reached the car, and Alec drew a fine telescope from his shirt and handed it to Milo. Carry this with you on your journey, he said softly, for there is much worth noticing that often escapes the eye. Through it you can see everything from the tender moss in the sidewalk crack to the glow of the farthest star, and most importantly of all, you can see things as they really are, not just as they seem to be. It's my gift to you. Milo placed the telescope carefully in the glove compartment and reached up to shake Alec by the hand. Then he stepped on the starter and with his head full of strange new thoughts, drove out the far end of the forest. The easy, rolling countryside now stretched before them in a series of dips and rises that leapt up one side of each crest and slid gently down the other in a way that made stomachs laugh and faces frown. As they topped the brow of the highest hill, a deep valley appeared ahead. The road finally making up its mind, plummeted down as if anxious to renew acquaintance with the sparkling blue stream that flowed below. When they reached the floor of the valley, the wind grew stronger as it funneled through the rocks, and directly ahead, a bright-colored speck grew larger and larger. It looks like a wagon, cried Milo excitedly. It is a wagon. A carnival wagon, seconded talk. And that's exactly what it was. On its side, in enormous white letters bordered in black, was the inscription, Cacophonous A. Discord. And below, in slightly smaller black letters bordered in white, was Doctor of Dissonance. 
Perhaps if someone's at home, he might tell us how far we have to go, said Milo, parking next to the wagon. He tiptoed timidly up the three wooden steps to the door, tapped lightly, and leapt back in fright. For the moment he knocked, there was a terrible crash from inside the wagon that sounded as if a whole set of dishes had been dropped from the ceiling onto a hard stone floor. At the same time, the door flew open, and from the dark interior, a hoarse voice inquired, Have you ever heard a whole set of dishes dropped from the ceiling onto a hard stone floor? Milo, who had tumbled back off the steps, sat up quickly, while Talk and the humbug rushed from the car to see what had happened. Well, have you? insisted the voice, which (coughs) was so raspy that it made you want to clear your own throat. Not until just now, replied Milo, getting to his feet. Ah, I thought not, said the voice happily. Have you ever heard an ant wearing fur slippers walk across a thick wool carpet? And before they could answer, he went on in his strange croaking way. Well, don't just stand there in the cold. Come in, come in. It's lucky you happened by. None of you looks well. The faint glow of a ceiling lamp dimly illuminated the wagon as they cautiously stepped inside. Talk first, eager to defend against all dangers. Milo next, frightened but curious. And the humbug last, ready at any moment to run for his life. That's right. Now let's have a look at you, he said. Very bad, very bad, a serious case. The dusty wagon was lined with shells full of curious boxes and jars of a kind found in old apothecary shops. It looked as though it hadn't been swept out in years. Bits and pieces of equipment lay strewn all over the floor, and at the rear was a heavy wooden table covered with books, bottles, and bric-a-brac. Have you ever heard a blindfolded octopus unwrap a cellophane-covered bathtub? He inquired again, as the air was filled with a loud, crinkling, snapping sound. Sitting at the table, busily mixing and measuring, was the man who had invited them in. He was wearing a long, white coat with a stethoscope around his neck, and a small, round mirror attached to his forehead. And the only really noticeable things about him were his tiny mustache and his enormous ears, each of which was fully as large as his head. Are you a doctor? asked Milo, trying to feel as well as possible. I am cacophonous a discord, doctor of dissonance, roared the man, and as he spoke, Several small explosions and a grinding crash were heard. What does the A stand for? stammered the nervous bug, too frightened to move. As loud as possible, bellowed the doctor, and two screeches and a bump accompanied his response. Now, step a little closer and stick out your tongues. Mm, Just as I suspected, he continued opening a large, dusty book and thumbing through the pages. You're suffering from a severe lack of noise. He began to jump around the wagon, snatching bottles from the shelves until he had a large assortment in various colors and sizes collected at one end of the table. All were neatly labeled. Loud cries, soft cries, bangs, bongs, smashes, crashes, swishes, swooshes, snaps and crackles, whistles and gongs, squeaks, squawks, and miscellaneous uproar. After pouring a little of each into a large glass beaker, he stirred the mixture thoroughly with a wooden spoon, watching intently as it smoked and steamed and boiled and bubbled. Be ready in just a moment, he explained, rubbing his hands. Milo had never seen such unpleasant-looking medicine and wasn't at all anxious to try any. 
Just what kind of doctor are you? he asked suspiciously. Well, you might say I'm a specialist, said the doctor. I specialize in noise, all kinds, from the loudest to the softest, and from the slightly annoying to the terribly unpleasant. For instance, have you ever heard a square-wheeled steamroller ride over a street full of hard-boiled eggs? he asked. And as he did, all that could be heard were loud, crunching sounds. But who would want all those terrible noises? asked Milo, holding his ears. Everybody does, said the surprised doctor. They're very popular today. But I'm kept so busy I can hardly fill the orders for noise pills, racket lotion, clamor salve, and hubbub tonic. That's all people seem to want these days. He stirred the beaker of liquid a few more times, and then, as the steam cleared, continued. Business wasn't always so good. Years ago, everyone wanted pleasant sounds, and except for a few orders during wars and earthquakes, things were very bad. But then, the big cities were built, and there was a great need for honking horns, screeching trains, clanging bells, deafening shouts, piercing shrieks, gurgling drains, and... All the rest of those wonderfully unpleasant sounds we use so much of today. Without them, people would be very unhappy. So I make sure they get as much as they want. Why, if you take a little of my medicine every day, you'll never have to hear a beautiful sound again. Here, try some. If it's all the same to you, I'd rather not, said the humbug, backing away to the far corner of the wagon. I don't want to be cured of beautiful sounds, insisted Milo. Besides, growled Tuck, who decided that he didn't much like Dr. Discord. There is no such illness as lack of noise. Of course not, replied the doctor, pouring himself a small glass of the liquid. That's what makes it so difficult to cure. I only treat illnesses that don't exist. That way... If I can't cure them, there's no harm done. Mm. Just one of the precautions of the trade, he concluded, and seeing that no one was about to take his medicine, he again reached toward the shelf, removed a dark amber bottle, dusted it carefully, and placed it on the table in front of him.